Hi, Andy Evans here. Uh, welcome to part 24 of making a guitar in your garage. Okay, so just a quick update on the on the uh, fretting of the the white guitar. Haven't got a name for it yet. I need to get a name for this, you know, a model. Um, it's a prototype. So if you've got any good ideas, uh, leave me a message below. Um, okay. Okay, so I use the Jessica Gold Evo fret wire. It's harder than nickel silver. Um, it's very important to get the radius correct of the fret wire. Um, you want it just a tiny, tiny bit uh, tighter than the radius of the fingerboard. Uh, so this is a compound radius. It's um, 25 centimeters here, which is part of a 10 inch circle. Um, it's 12 inches here which is I think it's, it's up 30, 30 centimeters maybe so it's part of a 12 inch circle here uh, so it's a different radius all the way along and what I found was um, I had to have it a little bit tighter here and a little bit tighter here that the radius of the, the, the frets um, so basically um, if you don't if you don't do that those, the edges will spring up here uh, if you do exactly the same radius, I prefer to do it a little bit tighter and it just seems to seat in better and I think what happens the tangs, the little um, barbs on the tangs, when, when, you, when if, it's, if it's a tighter radius than the fingerboard, when you knock it in they go in and they sort of go in sideways and it locks the fret down a bit better. So I sort of did like a 9 inch circle here, a 10 inch circle in the middle uh, and I think it was about 11 inches here so that's a tighter radius the fret wire I made it at those dimensions okay so I've put a coat of uh, lacquer on the front I don't know if you can see it yeah you can see that there it looks quite nice there's a teak fingerboard um, you have to lacquer it if you don't lacquer it teak it goes grey and the grain opens up it looks horrendous so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get a few coats of lacquer on here um, I'm not gonna skim this guitar yet until um, I'm actually gonna put um, pickups on it string it all up wait a while until the neck settles and see what happens play it a while and then i'll skim it a good tip of uh, skimming guitars which not a lot of manufacturers do uh, i've not seen many of them doing it um, is put your strings on first normally people skim the necks um, straight you know they just skim it with a straight edge but what happens when you put your strings on it pulls it unevenly the neck it normally pulls it forward like this the tension of the strings because you've got I'm not quite sure but I think there's about 90 kilo on there you know pulling, you're pulling your strings that way so the neck's going to move and you counteract that with the um, truss rod you tighten the truss rod and that straightens the neck um, what I'll do with this I'll put all the strings on leave it a week play it a bit um, and then I'll clamp the body down with the strings on, clamp the body perfectly to the bench, you know, make sure there's, uh, it's protected underneath, and then I'll put a wedge underneath uh, the headstock, um, and I won't push the wedge under tight, I'll just, just place it underneath to exactly where the tension of the strings are, and then I'll put two wedges underneath um, this way, under the bench here, to support it, I don't push them, I just put them underneath, and then I'll undo the strings, take the strings off and skim it. That way you know you're levelling the fret board exactly as it would be when it's under tension with the um, strings on. So it's a very good way of doing it. I mean uh, a lot of large manufacturers don't do that because it's not cost effective. They, they skim them quickly you know before uh, well, actually, I saw a thing on Gibson the other day, and they skimmed uh, on a computer, which I didn't realise. Um, a, a computerised machine skims the frets. I just do them with a straight edge, do them by eye. It's a very important part of uh, guitar making, getting that right. Uh, so there you go. That's coming on nicely. It's starting to look good. Um, so the next thing, I need to put some dots in the side here. I uh, haven't done that yet. Um, I need to sand this down a bit better, um, do another coat of uh, white on it, and then some clear coat. Sanding in between with 320 grit, um, eventually go to about 400, and I'll put the final two coats on, leave it uh, a week, wet and dry sand, uh, probably start with about 1200 grit, go to about 15, uh, and then polish it, and uh, put all the components on. 
so that's going to look quite nice that I need to try and figure out a logo I haven't got a name yet if you can uh, back in 30 odd years ago I used to make guitars for a company called uh, Gordon uh, Gordon Smiths and Gord, Gordon Whitton guitars Gordy guitars and I made in my spare time I made uh, probably five or six guitars for, for myself and I put my own name on and it varied um, my second name is Evans so um, I made some guitars with just EV on them, EV. But now you've got that man, uh, amplifier manufacturer who's called EV. So we can't use that one. I also uh, made some with AJE, um, which is my uh, my middle name is John, so Andrew John Evans. Uh, but then you've got Paul Reed Smith, so AJE, I'm not quite sure. I've also Googled that name, and there's, there's another manufacturer out there called that AJE. And then yesterday I was thinking of, uh, I can't think of a name for a guitar, you know, guitar manufacturer. So I thought of no name guitars, but oh, that's a good one. And then I Google that and there's already somebody out there with that name. So it's quite tricky to think of a catchy name, you know. So if you can think of anything, let me know. Um, on the last podcast I was talking about whether or not to trim these frets uh, before or after the glue is dry. I've decided on doing it when the, when the glue is wet. Um, uh, trim them, file them. Uh, if you've got any issues, you can clamp them down or mess around with the frets. You, you know, I clamp them down here and it's, it's stayed down. So I'm going to do that instead of waiting 24 hours for the glue to set. I'm going to do it when the glue's fresh. If you've got any high frets or anything, you can uh, sort them out at that point. Okay, I'll just show you how I uh, trim the frets with my trim uh, with my trimmer. So that's my homemade uh, fret trimmer that I made. Um, I do it that way, vertically. So it's it's uh, you're putting it on the side, of both both sides of the fret like this. I don't know if you can see that, I'll do it like this. You do it like that and trim them that way. If you do it that way, um, you can crush the tang sometimes, and it looks it looks ugly from the top as you look down. You have this distorted tang. So try and trim your frets that way, if you can see that, I think you can, okay, trim them like that. After that I get my homemade, homemade um, file, uh, fret skimming file, it's very important to protect the body, put some plastic here, you know, stick it on or something, both sides. I'm actually going to make something that covers the whole guitar, a plastic, uh, flexible plastic in it. I'm going to make a slot here and just bang it on every time, very thin plastic. Because you don't want to be, uh, when you file a fret, you don't want to be scutching these. So I just do this by hand, uh, sort of 35 degrees roughly. Cut them all off as close as I can with the uh, tank, uh, with the cutter, fret, fret cutter. And then I just some, some, uh, file by hand like this, about 35 degrees, you know both on both sides. I mean that'll get done again when I uh, skim the frets but I've got to get it down quite close because it's going to be a lacquered fingerboard and when I skim the frets I don't want to uh, go through the lacquer you know. Okay I've still got this cold. Uh, I live in the south of France. The weather's changing. I don't know if you noticed it's the first time I've got uh, long pants on today. It's normally normally shorts every day here but um, just getting up to October now so it's going to start getting a bit chilly which I'm quite looking forward to the winter months um, it's a bit, be a bit cooler down here because all the air conditioning units blow hot air into here at uh, some time so it's a, a nightmare down here at summer very very hot okay so that's got the guitar I'll put it to the side um, I mean that's going to look quite nice that guitar with the gold fret that's a teak fingerboard all polished up um, I put another couple of coats of um, lacquer on this guitar yesterday um, it's just lacquered it's not uh, it's a bit rough you know I'm trying to get a sunburst going on here um, I need to make I'd like to make it a bit darker on the edges uh, one thing I realized yesterday because this has been stained with uh, food color and I'm trying to I'm trying to put a tint into my uh, lacquer and I tried a cherry tint tint yesterday and uh, I'm, I'm quite new to spraying, I haven't done a lot of spraying, you know. And um, one thing I realised was um, the, to, to get like a dark, 
really dark sunburst here. I need a darker colour than cherry. So I'm actually thinking very a black, a very small amount of black in the lacquer, just to tint it darker around here. So this is on its way. I don't know if you can notice that head's not there. There's a little, a little tribute to David Bowie actually. It's a little black star. That was his final album before he passed away, and he's one of my uh, heroes. Uh, I used to love uh, Mick Ronson as well, the guitar player. He was fantastic. Earl Slick was good. Uh, so I've done a little black star there in the back. Um, it's a veneered headstock at the back, and I've put a little. And it's a little bit. It's going to be hidden a little bit by the uh, tune heads. Sort of, you know, it was a hidden. Uh, his uh, a lot of his songs had hidden meanings. So I've done a little, uh, a little hidden black star there as a tribute to Bowie. One of the one of the finest uh, singer uh, singer songwriters that ever lived, you know. Okay. Uh, okay. What else have I got on the bench? So I'll put that to the side. I've got this one, the green guitar. Uh, this is a bit rough, but if you can see, I bound the uh, edges of the fingerboard with some ebony. There you go. You can see that now. And that's going. This is going to have gold frets in it. As I say with this one, because I've bound it, you'll have to, I'll have to uh, cut a little piece out, you know, at the end of the fret, um, a tang, and file them flat, put them in. It's a lot more work, but um, the result's nice. You don't, you know, you don't see the fret, the edge. So this is quite rough at the minute, but um, and the neck's a lot too thick. It was a piece of wood that I had, which is way too thick. As I say, I haven't got a, um, a planer at the moment, which is something that I really need. So I'm going to get a plane very shortly. So um, I'm going to work on this one today. I'm going to carve the neck down a bit more um, using a rasp and uh, a cabinet scraper. Um, it's good to have a profile um, gauge if you can get one. It's, I don't know what you know if you know what a profile gauge is. It's um, a thing with lots of little um, pieces of metal in or plastic, and you put it onto whatever you're shaping. Have a look. And it tells you if it's symmetrical or something's out. You know they're very good for doing these. Um, if you can't get a profile shaper, what you can do, you can make your own profile shaper. Um, get some thin MDF. Uh, you know, f I don't know, five mil something like that, or plywood, four mil plywood. Um, use a hole cutter. Get some hole cutters and cut some holes out in the, in there, and then cut it in half so you've got a semicircle. So if you're aiming for a C, C shape type uh, contour on your neck, you can use that um, just to check. You know, you put your put your semicircle on here, check that the contour is correct. Check it in the middle, check it in there. Once you're happy with the thickness here and the thickness there, uh, then normally what I do is get a block of wood, quite long. Uh, that's not a block of wood, but something like that, about about this long, with 40 grit on it or 60. And you sand like this, you know, along and around at the same time. Because you want the neck straight. If you sand by hand with a small block, the neck, as you look, is, is going to be uneven like this, along, along there, you know. So you want to use a, a bit longer than that, probably about like that long, uh, with some sandpaper around it, use that. Do the and sand like a bit move move it around keep it moving and you'll get a nice console um, eventually if I start getting orders for these guitars and making a lot of them um, I'll make some type of um, um, machine from for, for doing the radiuses uh, doing the um, carving the necks just on my guitars if it's a custom guitar it's a different story you have to do it all by hand on a custom guitar okay um, so I think that's it for this podcast. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. If you like what you see, pass uh, my uh, podcast on to your friends. And please, please leave me a uh, please leave me a message. Feel free to leave me a message. Any questions or if you yeah, that you have, uh, please leave me a message. And I'll try to answer it. Anything you spot that I'm doing wrong, let me know, um, and we'll have a debate. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day.